What makes American English sound American? Really, seriously, what separates American English from the English spoken in the UK or Ireland or India? Well, probably many things, but in this lesson, we are going to go over one aspect of American English, particularly the way Americans pronounce the T in a specific instance. It is called the flap T, okay? What is the flap T? Well, it is a way of pronouncing the T that is a distinguishing feature of American English. So if your goal is to sound more American, you might wanna watch this video because we are gonna talk about the flap T, when to use it, how to use it, so the mechanics of it, and then we will have some flap T practice. We'll also go over a few exceptions because it wouldn't be an English lesson without them. So if you wanna be able to better understand Americans when they are speaking conversationally, if you wanna improve your North American English accent, keep watching. I want you to listen to the way I pronounce the T, or maybe the double T, in these words. Bitter, better, little, turtle, city, 40, tartar, autumn. Notice I am not pronouncing the T as a true T. T, -t, -t. This is probably the way you were taught to pronounce the T in your English classes. And it's definitely a great starting point, but in reality, there are so many ways that we native English speakers pronounce the T. In these words that I just said, I was pronouncing the T almost as if it were a light D sound. This is what we call the flap T. Sounds like a light D. It's not a hard D, like the D that comes at the beginning of words, like Doug or dog. I'm not saying bitter or bottom. I'm saying bitter, bottom. And although it is not a hard D, it is closer to that D sound, that hard D sound, than it actually is to a true T sound because we are still engaging our vocal cords, right? D -d 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 -d. My vocal cords are vibrating as they would in a hard D. To make this flap T sound, you just lightly tap the area above your two front teeth, okay? D, d, d. This area is called your alveolar ridge. D, 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 d. Make sure you are engaging your vocal cords. D, 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 d. Just a light tap is all you need. So you can see in this photo that your alveolar ridge it's just that part that kind of sticks out right above your two front teeth. Try to touch that with the tip of your tongue. Duh, 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 duh. Okay, so that's it. This sound is so common in American English. If you get a good grasp on the sound, you will be on your way to sounding much more native in conversation, if that's your goal. So now that we know how to make the flap T sound, which we can also sometimes just call the flap, we will go over when this flap T or flap occurs. It occurs when T, or perhaps a double T, is between two vowel sounds, but only when the vowel after the T is unstressed. So let's look at the examples I used before in the beginning and a few more. Bottom, bottom. The T is between two vowel sounds and the second one is unstressed. So we do not say bottom, bottom. In American English, we would just say bottom, bottom with the flap. Next we have bitter, bitter. Again, the same situation applies. The T is between two vowels, the second one being unstressed. So I make the flap sound instead of the true T. Next we have city. City, later, later. 
Now here's a three syllable word. Even with three syllable words, we can still apply the flap. Quality, quality. I didn't say quality, quality. I said quality, flap on that T, quality. Making a true T takes a little bit more effort and Americans tend to be a little bit lazy in conversation. So making that flat D allows us to speak more quickly and will allow you also to speak more quickly. Alacrity, alacrity, another three syllable word. Adam, Adam, data, data. So of course there are exceptions. Let's go over those exceptions. When the T comes before a syllabic N, so a syllabic N is when the N sound sort of makes a whole syllable, for instance, in words like cotton, threaten, mitten, we don't use the flap. Okay, so I'll repeat that. We do not use the flap when the T comes before a syllabic N sound. We didn't say cotton or mitten, we say cotton, mitten. So this is actually another type of T called the glottal T or the stop T, but we will go over that in another video. But for now, just know it's not a flap. So the flap T does not just occur within one word, but it can also be used in between two words, okay? So we can link two words with the flap or the flap T. For instance, but I, but I, I didn't say, but I, I said, but I, but I don't want to go to work, but I don't want to go to work. Next, out of, out of, the T in out becomes a flap T because before the T there is a vowel and after the T is an unstressed vowel. I did not say out of, I said out of, out of, get me out of here, get me out of here. Next, thought of thought of. I didn't say thought of, I said thought of, thought of. I never thought of it like that. I never thought of it like that. The next situation in which you might hear a flat T is when we have a vowel sound, then an R, the T, and then an unstressed vowel sound, okay? So examples of that will be party, party reported, reported, martyr, martyr, sorting, sorting, tortoise, tortoise. Okay, and like in the first situation, we can also link two words with the flap. Part of, part of. I wanna be a part of the team. I wanna be a part of the team. Heart attack, heart attack. You almost gave me a heart attack. You almost gave me a heart attack. Sort of, sort of. I like it here, sort of. I like it here, sort of. And again, just like in the first situation, there are exceptions when the T is followed by a syllabic N sound. So we don't say cardin, cardin. It would be carton carton. And this word wouldn't be Spartan, it would be Spartan, okay? So we're using a different type of T, not the flap T. And another situation in which we would have the flap T is if we have a vowel, the T, and then a syllabic L sound. So this is when the L is pronounced for a whole syllable. It's a dark L sound. Ol, ol, ol. And we make that dark L sound by kind of bringing our tongue back. Ol, ol. And that syllabic L is also unstressed. So think of words like title, total, little, fatal, metal, cattle. And the last situation we will talk about is when we have a vowel sound and R, the T, and then the syllabic L. Startle, turtle, chortle, mortal, 
portal. All have the flap or flap T. Please also note that if you are pronouncing any of these words and you decide to use a true T sound, t -t -t, that is not incorrect. It is a perfectly acceptable way to pronounce these words. But just note, rarely do North American English speakers pronounce these words in conversation with a true T sound. And it's definitely important to learn how to pronounce words, not just in isolation, but in conversation, because we typically use words in conversation, right? So being able to recognize that Americans tend to use the flap in those situations I mentioned will help you understand the American accent much better. And if you choose to take on a North American English accent, it's worthwhile to practice this flap T or flap. So to practice the flap T, you are going to repeat these sort of nonsense phrases. I am not good with coming up with sentences, so don't focus on how horrible these sentences sound and just practice the skill. 40 turtles on the bottom of the sea. 40 turtles on the bottom of the sea. Not bad. Peanut brittles better than bottled beer. Peanut brittles better than bottled beer. Okay. Little flower petals starting to blow away. Little flower petals starting to blow away. The mortal retorted that the little boy was startled. The mortal retorted that the little boy was startled. Okay, so that is the end of today's lesson on the flap or flap T sound. If you found this video useful, make sure to give me a like. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. I also just like to read your comments. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like more lessons on American English pronunciation. And until next time, English learners.